The spring runoff is in full swing and it's time to finalize our electric connections. Finally, we are getting close to firing the system up. Thanks to all the subscribers for their patience with this process. No one wants to see this completed more than myself. Let me first say that you should always engage the expertise of a qualified professional electrician to work on any electrical system. We are fortunate to have the assistance of our neighbor who worked as a state electrical inspector. A few subscribers asked me to show specifics, so I'll try to be very detailed. On our original configuration, the transmission distance was only 300 feet. We had the turbine connected direct drive to the generator and wired to output single phase 120-240 volt power in a very standard single phase configuration. The new configuration needs transmission to go nearly 1100 feet with a greatly increased amount of power. This means increased resistance and potential voltage drop. We have used direct burial number 6 gauge wires with 3 conductors and a number 10 gauge grounding wire. This can enable us at some point in the future to add a second water jet and transmit 3 phase 480 volt power should the need arise. The greatest expense is in the burial of the wire so planning for potential expanded future capacity was a logical choice to us. The complexity of three-phase load management, the cost of rewiring the house for three-phase distribution, and the lack of need for excess power were all factors in our decision to retain our single-phase system. We will use two of the number six wires we buried to transmit 480 volt power 1100 feet to a single phase transformer which will step the power down to 120 240 volts and create the neutral leg to match our existing house wiring. On a high quality generator like ours there are 12 leads that can be wired in numerous schemes depending on the type of power you wish to produce. A manual for the generator shows all the wiring options. The wiring configuration we have selected will be for a single phase 480 volt generation. We will tap the power from L1 and L2 for 480 volts. This power will first go through a master disconnect in the powerhouse. Through a breaker we have attached a small 1500 watt transformer to step down the 480 volt power to 120 volts for local power in the powerhouse. The output of this transformer feeds into a small breaker box to supply lights, outlets, monitoring equipment, and a cooling fan. Note that due to the presence of water in the powerhouse, all the boxes need to be rated 3R. All of the boxes, fixtures, and generator are grounded to a common grounding rod. The power is transmitted via the number 6 direct burial cable under the road and up to the house. The benefit of using 480 volts is that we will get less line loss due to resistance in the wire and can also use a smaller gauge wire which is less expensive. The trade-off is that we will need a 480 volt transformer at the house to step the power down. To prevent tampering we have placed the fuse disconnect inside the garage. The two hot legs of the 480 volt go through fuses and then into the primary side of the 10 kilowatt single phase transformer. This transformer is wall mounted on concrete block in hopes that any vibration will not transmit as sound into the living space. Quality transformers can be wired in a variety of configurations. We have chosen to tap the secondary side of the transformer to supply the same type of power we had from the first original spring-fed powerhouse. To connect large gauge wires, we use copper split bolt connectors. We put two layers of cushion tape, which are then covered with electric tape. This will prevent any abrasion over time, which could result in short circuiting and the potential for fire. We are stepping down from 480 volts on the primary input side to 120 240 volts on the secondary output side. This enables us to feed the appropriate voltage a short distance via 6 gauge 3 wire through conduit into the same junction box where the original setup came into the building. 
Where custom fit is required, PVC conduit can be heated using a propane heater to the point where it is bendable and then shaped for a proper fit. A transfer switch is used to select the power source. If the hydro power system is down for some reason, a different generator can be selected to supply power to the main panel. In this case, the load controller is not functioning and the power is supplied directly to the main breaker panel. Initially, we will run the system with the same load controller configuration that existed on the original spring-fed system. The resistive loads currently are a 4500 watt water heater and three 1500 watt baseboard heaters for when the water heater has heated all of our domestic water. Our load controller was manufactured in Canada by Thompson and Howe and it has worked flawlessly for decades to automatically balance the load to the generated power. How it does this is by using a mini computer to monitor the speed of the hertz of the system. If the hertz starts to rise, it means there is more power being generated than used. So a portion of the sine wave of the electricity will be shunted off to a resistive load by two thyristor switches in the load controller. The system hertz or speed is also monitored by a protection circuit. It also watches the speed the generator is running and allows you to set an upper and lower limit on the range the speed can change. Should the speed go outside these limits, an electromagnet will release and gravity will position a jet deflector to divert water from driving the Pelton wheel in the turbine and the system will automatically shut down. The only other change we are currently making is to move the meter from the spring-fed powerhouse into the garage so it will read the new system. We will route the hot leads through amperage transformers in a new position which will show us in the house how many amps are available. As we prove the new system's capacity and add more water for generating more power, we will configure the resistive loads to maximize the use of our newly harnessed resource. These might include another water heater, a jacuzzi, or possibly a greenhouse. We're two years into this process at this point, and we're really stoked to finally see the day when we'll get to turn some of this water into juice. <laughs>